For Off the Block, I'm Vinny Lopes, and we are now joined by Ball State men's volleyball head coach Joel Walton after his team was able to defeat Loyola in four games to advance to the MIVA tournament semifinals. And coach, how would you assess your team's performance tonight? Um, Vinny, I think we were a little shaky in game one. Uh, Loyola played a different right-side attacker in place of Ben Playstead because Playstead suffered a concussion. And that impacted us. Uh, Kasakis came in and did a good job with his serve in game one. We weren't very comfortable. We, we just haven't seen him play that much this season, so we didn't have uh, a good game plan on him. And it, it took our guys a little while to adjust. Uh, but games, games two, three, and four, we, we played better. Uh, our serve came around in game two. We, we had four aces in that game. Uh, we got into our offensive systems, and once we had asserted ourselves and got, got control of the match, we were able to hold on to it until the end. Coach, I'm looking at you offensively tonight, a pretty balanced performance, but you know, one player in particular, Rudon, you know, can you just talk about his play, especially late in the season as he's getting more playing time? Uh, Rudon's a freshman uh, who comes out of Chicago, and basically Joliet, Illinois, and he set the Illinois record for kids in a career. So he's a very capable attacker, uh, we've been working with Blake on just being consistent uh, through the course of the season. And uh, there are a lot of days in practice where if he wasn't on the first team, uh, all of a sudden the second team is winning games and winning drills because he was able to lead them to, to being successful. So he's, he's worked very hard at improving his game and he's taking advantage of an opportunity to be out on the court here for us later in the season and doing some really good things. Yeah. And coach, in a matchup like this, I know going to it, you kind of look at some of the players on the court and you have maybe two of the best middle attackers in the country. You know, can you just, from your side of the net, can you just assess the job that um, Matt Walsh was able to do tonight? Well, Walsh was matched up tonight with Jeff Jendrick, and I know those two guys have played against each other for a number of years. Uh, there's probably a good rivalry going between them. Walsh this season for us has been very consistent with his offense. Uh, and, and he is a really dominant blocker. He's somebody that just alters how the team that's playing against you attacks both in the middle and, and at the pin on the outside. Uh, the other thing that Walsh does for us, uh, there are nights where he can be one of our best servers and put a lot of pressure on teams and score some points when he runs for us as well. Yeah. And Coach, you know, you look at this first time since 2014 that, that you guys are going to be back in the MIVA tournament final. What does this postseason win for you, or win mean for you guys, especially with so many freshmen on the court for you this year? Uh, I'm just really pleased with some things our, our guys are doing. Uh, Chev, as a freshman, is showing a lot of leadership. Connor Gross, uh, Matt Walsh are really instrumental to how our team has played, and We've had some role players tonight. Mitch Weiler came in and studied our passing. Uh, Eduardo Cartagena had suffered a, a bit of a foot injury um, against Loyola the first time around. And so he was he really carried us last weekend, and we were able to switch around and, and play some different people uh, in that in that spot tonight. And so we're, we're seeing some guys take advantage of opportunities to be on the court. Uh, guys lifting us up when given those chances. And, that's where I'm, I'm really proud because it's a, a nice team effort. We're, we're playing right now our liberos. Uh, we're kind of platooning them where Russell is receiving serve and Levanchi is playing defense for us. And so we're able to get both of our liberos on the court and they're both helping uh, in, in ways that emphasize the strengths of their game. Yeah. And Coach, I want to ask, you know, the last three weeks it seems like your offense has been, you know, kind of finding its rhythm a little bit, especially after that loss against Ohio State. What have you seen has been the biggest difference with your offense down the stretch and tonight in the postseason? Well, Reardon coming in and setting out our passing, uh, Cartagena setting out our passing here late in the season, those things have helped. Uh, Reardon hit negative last, last weekend, but the defensive plays that he was making his job, and serve receive, and really even some of the errors that he made attacking, they were aggressive, aggressive kind of errors. So he's he's done a good job there, and, and I think we're giving Connor an opportunity to run our offense from a better place on the court. We're not pulling him off the net as much, and, and he's taking advantage of that. Yeah. All right, Coach, and final question, we'll let you go on this. You know, you kind of look at how this bracket's shaping up. Go be playing Ohio State on Wednesday night in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, can you just give us your initial thoughts on what you guys are going to have to do to be able to beat the Buckeyes? Well, 
And we've got to figure out a way to play better defense than we did the first two times against Ohio State. That's really where our game plan is going to start. We can't allow their attackers, their outside attackers, to hit four and five hundred like they have in our first two matchups. So, to me, that's that's really going to be our key as we go into Ohio State and uh, and just try to keep our offense on track, even though we know Ohio State is one of the better serving teams in the country. Uh, we've got to be able to manage those serves and give Connor again a chance to run our offense from a good place close to the net. 